Hi, so for my final project, I'm going to be talking about Betula lenta, uh, kind of like the one beh uh, behind me here, which I found last summer uh, near the Bear Meadows uh, natural area uh, just south of us in Pennsylvania. So uh, Betula lenta, otherwise uh, the common name is the sweet birch, is in the Betulaceae family. Um, it's also in the Figales order, along with uh, things like um, the walnut family, Juglandaceae, the oak family. Uh, and several other um, uh, Figales trees. That puts it in the rosid clade, so it's distantly related to roses, which makes it an angiosperm tree, so it's a flowering plant. Uh, and then I've got some range figures uh, up here next to me, uh, but its range is generally uh, the Appalachian Mountains, where it's very common, especially in the northern portion of the Appalachian Mountains. And it's also very common in uh, much of New England. Uh, it, its range does extend up into uh, parts of upstate New York and uh, west a little bit into Ohio. Now, its habitat, uh, it lives mostly in wet but pretty well-drained soils, but it can also uh, do pretty well in a lot of rocky soils, um, which makes it pretty good at living on top of mountains. And uh, it also, it's very well, it, it's a cold adapted tree, as we'll see later. Um, so it, it prefers uh, temperate forests that um, get below freezing in the winter. Uh, the tree itself, it's generally a small to medium-sized woody perennial tree, uh, and it's a, a fast-growing tree, uh, and it's pretty well adapted to take advantages of open spaces um, and along forest edges, which makes it an important early successional uh, tree species. Uh, the tree is Iteropera, so it does flower uh, pretty much every year most of the time. And it, uh, it possesses uh, monoecious uh, flowers of the catkin type, so it has catkin type infl inflorescences, uh, which are specialized for wind dispersal uh, of both pollen and seeds. And uh, the catkins themselves, when they're young, uh, they're green and the flowers are small, uh, so that makes it not ideal. Uh, for insect uh, pollination uh, or dispersal. Uh, now, I've got some uh, phenology uh, figures from iNaturalist up next to me now, uh, but the staminate uh, catkins, they actually bud in the late summer, around August or maybe late September, um, but that doesn't really come out in the figure too well, and they, um, they really flower in April and May, which is also when the staminate catkins and the leaves also appear, so they're all appearing at the same time. And then the flowering uh, and uh, fruiting is mostly synchronous within the species, and it's also pretty synchronous with other species of birch, and as a result, um, wild uh, hybrid uh, birch trees uh, have been documented. And the staminate uh, catkins of the birch trees have been shown uh, to actually prefer releasing the pollen on warm, windy, uh, and dry days with low humidity uh, to facilitate better air dispersal because you don't want the rain or the humidity washing your pollen out of the air. Um, and uh, when it's windy, your pollen will go further. Uh, and uh, in Betula lenta, uh, self-pollination has been observed uh, and it's probably pretty common because it's pretty easy for a pollen grain um, to travel a short distance from a staminate catkin uh, to a, a female catkin and uh, pollinate it that way. However, um, cross pollen outcrossing is probably preferable. And because the, the pollen grains are produced in such high quantity, and because they're so light, they're very well adapted for uh, long distance wind pollen dispersal. Um, and so after pollination occurs, um, uh, after May, the staminate catkins will fall off. Uh, and you can see them littering the ground around when they do fall off. But then uh, the female catkins will persist um, until or even through winter. Uh, and that does come out in the phenology diagram here. Uh, and then, but they'll turn, the female catkins will turn from green to brown. And then they'll, the, they'll get really scaly. And then the small Samara seeds, like little tiny winged seeds, uh, will fall off. And the wings help with wind dispersal. So as a result, the tree prefers to release its seeds on dry 
uh, windy days with uh, below zero temperatures. Uh, and so um, the windy portion allows the seeds to be uh, transported or dispersed some distance from the tree. Uh, but then um, one study showed that uh, once the seeds actually land on the snow and the ice, the wind can even actually blow them uh, further away uh, from the tree than just the normal wind uh, as they fall from the tree. Uh, so not only is this tree um, uh, adapted to colder temperatures, but it actually uses those uh, colder icy temperatures as part of its dispersal mechanism, which is pretty cool. And so um, as a result, its affinity for um, Appalachian mountain habitats, um, where it might uh, stay colder in its southern, especially in the southern portion of its range, um, uh, it helps with the seed dispersal, but also that high position on the mountains uh, may help with uh, the wind dispersal, both the seeds and the pollen as well. And then up in its New England range, um, the cold uh, helps with its uh, seed dispersal when it gets really icy. And so as a result, um, the reproductive strategy of this tree as a, a fast growing and wind pollinated early successional to forest edge mountain tree uh, has uh, been pretty successful um, as evidenced by this tree's uh, pretty wide um, geographic range in the uh, Northeastern uh, uh, United States. And also um, the tree is doing pretty well because the IUCN lists it as a, under their least concern status. So this tree is not uh, threatened uh, at all. So uh, yeah, that's the Betula the sweet birch, also my favorite tree.